Uh, hello, good morning, and thanks for the introduction. Uh, I'm Ozan, and uh, I was a PhD student at Imperial College London, and we conducted this work at the end of my PhD uh, early this year. Um, it's another uh, work uh, using attention models, um, and we have seen already two talks uh, related to that. Uh, today I'm going to discuss how we can use these uh, models uh, for image analysis. Uh, to begin with, um, I would like to discuss um, how we can. Uh, sorry, like I would like to discuss about the presentation outline. And um, first of all, I would like to give you motivation um, why we need uh, attention models. Um, my main understanding is that um, instead of using attention, sorry, instead of using uh, cascaded models, uh, we can use attention to propose. Um, 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 uh, regions of interest in the images, and then we can do uh, classification and uh, segmentation tasks. And then uh, after this motivation, I'm going to talk about uh, the attention literature. Uh, later, um, I'll propose you uh, our attention module and how we can incorporate it in our fully convolutional network. And at the end of my presentation, uh, I will show you uh, two experiments, uh, particularly image segmentation and classification, uh, together with results. So, um, as you might all know, um, researchers in the medical domain have tried to tackle uh, segmentation problems sometimes um, using uh, cascaded approaches uh, by dividing the pr uh, segmentation problem into um, localization and then segmentation. And uh, this way, basically, um, we are able to simplify the problem, and uh, we can afterwards first we detect a um, target interest. And then we do a uh, fine uh, segmentation on the cropped area. Like we can see, there's like a uh, hard attention, and uh, this is also quite uh, feasible because when the image resolution is quite high uh, and the image size is quite big, we cannot fit in the GPU memory. But uh, this this comes uh, at a cost. Uh, the cost is basically uh, we need to train multiple models, and that may not be always end-to-end. Uh, -end. And uh, there could be some uh, computation uh, resource waste, like uh, there might be some redundancy, because in both models, uh, we need to do uh, low-level uh, feature learning, and uh, we repeat this uh, multiple times. So to avoid that problem in the computer vision domain, uh, researchers have proposed uh, feature sharing, and this kind of architectures have been used uh, in mask RCNN or uh, multitask learning, like first we localize, and shared features are then uh, used both uh, in these approaches. As I said earlier, um, perhaps we can come up with even a simpler approach where we use attention module to give us like a soft uh, regions of interest, and we can do this uh, in a more uh, elegant way. So uh, before I move on uh, to our uh, proposed methodology, I would like to talk about how attention models uh, have developed uh, uh, in, the, in the machine learning literature. Uh, to the best of my knowledge, uh, the early work uh, dates back to 2014 in the neural machine translation, uh, where the interest was uh, for given context signal uh, in the sequential modeling. Uh, we wanted to, the researchers wanted to come up with like what is the best uh, word to focus on uh, in the sequence, uh, the sequence modeling, and that followed the uh, transformer uh, structure, st transformer layer uh, in the NLP domain, and we also uh, witnessed. Uh, works on image captioning, uh, again, using um, uh, attention module. And I want to like briefly go through this uh, toy example. Let's say that uh, we have this uh, abdominal uh, CT image. So the main idea is basically uh, we pass it through um, an image convolutional network, and we obtain a set of features. And then uh, for, um, for the image captioning problem, we need to do like a sequence modeling. And uh, with this LSTM, we have uh, hidden units. And for every given uh, hidden unit, attention models basically uh, does uh, linear weighting across these features. So the main idea is if you know that the first word is left and the, we reduce the search space to here, and then the attention model basically uh, iteratively picks up the, the uh, relevant features for that. So what we basically understand is that in general in the attention modeling, uh, we have a context signal, we have a set of features, and then we try to disambiguate uh, and try to select um, relevant features of, of for a given task. Um, in our case, um, uh, we have two signals, like in our uh, convolutional neural network model. Uh, the input signal is x, uh, uh, and uh, the gating signal is uh, g. And uh, we can consider them as uh, 4D tensors uh, for a given uh, batch size one. 
And the main idea is uh, how can we basically combine these uh, two signals uh, to come up with uh, attention coefficients, uh, which are later uh, passed through uh, activation functions such as uh, uh, softmax. And there are a couple of ways of doing it, and uh, we chose the option of our concatenation as in the graph convolution uh, example we have seen earlier. So the main idea is uh, we linearly uh, transform um, our X and our G signals, and they're coupled, uh, and then we learn a uh, nonlinear um, representation here uh, that is later uh, uh, needs to be um, uh, scaled between 0 and 1, and we achieve that uh, with a sigmoid function. Um, there could be other, uh, uh, we, could, we could use other uh, activation functions here, for as uh, softmax or, um, uh, or like a normalized softmax, but that might uh, specify the um, um, input features, and if you want to use this uh, progressively, uh, it's better to use uh, sigmoid. This is what we observed uh, experimentally working better. And uh, once we obtain the attention coefficients, uh, then basically uh, we scale our input feature maps uh, with these alphas, and then we pass. So um, how do we use uh, these attention gates uh, in a uh, full convolutional network? Uh, we chose a uh, unit architecture uh, in our experiments, and um, particularly uh, the attention gates are placed uh, on the skip connections. And um, you could, you, we could uh, choose uh, another architecture like a full convolution network. Uh, this is totally independent of the, um, the model that uh, we're using. And uh, in this case, uh, for given input uh, feature map, the gating signal is uh, obtained uh, from the coarser uh, scale. And that way, basically, we uh, eliminate uh, the background information and pass only the uh, features are corresponding to the uh, relevant areas, basically the salient image regions. So I want to show you how um, um, attention coefficients uh, evolve uh, during our training iterations. So to start with, uh, we assume a uniform distribution uh, across uh, all the uh, pixels. Um, and then uh, gradually uh, we observe that uh, attention coefficients basically um, focus on our target organs. And in our case, uh, this was uh, pancreas, uh, spleen, and kidneys. And uh, so I discussed earlier uh, how uh, we incorporate them in a unit architecture. So uh, for this uh, given uh, CT input image, uh, in the skip connection, uh, for example, uh, we obtained uh, these attention coefficients, and the skip connection uh, feature maps are gated uh, with these attention coefficients. And for multiple heads, uh, we obtain uh, these uh, uh, filter responses. And uh, as in the case of uh, graph convolutions or uh, NLP attention models, uh, we can use uh, multiple heads uh, for image analysis. And uh, each head basically is responsible for a uh, subpart of the uh, uh, target organs. Uh, we evaluated our model uh, in two different uh, experimental settings. Uh, the first one was uh, segmentation, the second one was uh, classification. Uh, for the uh, segmentation experiments, uh, we use uh, two data sets. Um, uh, they are uh, publicly available. And uh, the first one is a CT150 data set that contains uh, 150 uh, 3D CT images uh, together with uh, multi class labels. In our case, uh, we chose the kidney, spleen, and pancreas uh, labels. Uh, for the second data set uh, that was mentioned earlier yesterday, uh, sorry, that was mentioned yesterday, that um, um, the, this is the NIH data set, uh, TCI A82, uh, that contains only uh, pancreas labels. Uh, there are 82 images. Uh, we use uh, fourfold uh, cross validation. And we compared our model uh, against uh, 3D units and, uh, and uh, the relevant um, uh, state of the art uh, methods uh, for different uh, uh, training setups, uh, train test splits, and uh, model capacities. So, the, in the first uh, experiment, we basically compared uh, how the, um, the performance changes are for different uh, test and uh, training splits. So, we first use uh, 120 training images, and then in the second experiment, we use uh, 30 images. And we observed a uh, consistent improvement uh, compared to uh, units uh, for the pancreas. But for larger organs, uh, such as spleen and kidneys, um, it didn't make a difference because um, these organs are relatively easier to uh, segment, and you don't see many false positive predictions. Uh, you might say like, uh, that the, the proposed approach uh, uses uh, more uh, parameters. Um, to answer that question, basically, we 
uh, mesh the capacities uh, between the two models. So basically, we distributed extra uh, model parameters uh, across our unit. And uh, the, the corresponding uh, result is shown in the middle, and the, the attention unit are still obtained by the results uh, for the pancreas and uh, reduce our uh, surface distances. And the main improvement uh, is op uh, observed in the recall values, and the, we can uh, basically conclude that the model uh, keeps the accuracy while increasing the sensitivity. Um, then, uh, in the second experiment, uh, we focused on how uh, the single model can compare to the uh, cascaded approaches. And, um, so the, the first two uh, bars uh, correspond to the results uh, we obtained in our experiments. And we see that uh, even using a single model, we can achieve our results comparable to the uh, cascaded approaches. And uh, our models are actually limited by the uh, pixel resolution because uh, we have uh, used uh, 3D uh, networks. And in the future, we believe that uh, with uh, larger memory, actually, we can achieve uh, better and better results. Um, before I uh, finish, I want to also show uh, some results uh, on the image classification uh, setting. Um, this is the work uh, that we have uh, done together with a colleague of mine, uh, Josh Lemper, and we have a poster session uh, tomorrow. So the same module basically can be used um, in image classification as well. And uh, the main idea in here is that instead of doing like a pixel level uh, gating, we can do adaptive pooling. Uh, of the features. Uh, that way, basically, we can learn uh, test-specific uh, regions, and we aggregate results only from these areas. The main idea is, basically, if, if some features, like a fi fine-level features, are, are relevant to the task, uh, where we need to use uh, some texture uh, that can help us to obtain better results. And the other thing is, um, it is less sensitive to the image size, because when we uh, aggregate results uh, over large image sizes, uh, that can influence the statistics. Whereas when we do linear weighting, uh, that can actually uh, cope with that problem. And uh, we evaluated this model um, on uh, ultrasound image uh, plane classification uh, setting. And uh, here we see results um, uh, for the problem. And in this experiment, uh, for these given input images, we obtained uh, attention gate, uh, attention gate uh, uh, salient regions, like uh, where the network uh, pulled uh, the feature maps. And we see that uh, for uh, four chamber images, uh, that it picks the uh, cardiac chambers. And uh, as we go uh, deeper in the network, uh, it picks more coarse information. And this is like a more adaptive gating. So um, before I conclude, I would like to um, say a few words, uh, take a message, basically. Um, I think these are very uh, preliminary results, and um, it shows some uh, promising uh, feature uh, for attention modeling in the images, and especially for difficult organs to segment. Uh, we observe, basically, uh, higher recall rates and higher accuracy results. Um, and, but I uh, seriously believe that uh, this, this has uh, potential uh, for the future research. And uh, we have a uh, poster session uh, tomorrow morning, and uh, our code is um, publicly available if you would like to play with it. Uh, thank you for your um, attention. Thank you very much. Paper is open for questions. So I'm not sure if I understand correctly. Is your attention 2D or 3D in this case? Uh, so the question is, are the attention is 2D, 3D? It's a 3D. Uh, it's attention. a 3D. So yes. then you do a 3D ISTM after the attention? Sir? Do you do a 3D ISTM after the attention to? Uh, do I do 3D LSTM? Uh -huh. uh, I don't use LSTM. LSTM was just a uh, toy example to explain um, how attention works in general, so in the image cache and uh, setup. So um, we don't do any uh, sequential processing. Everything is uh, feed forward uh, in our model. OK, I see. Yeah. yeah, I have just a little question o over here. OK. So your final output, if you're segmenting the pancreas, do you post-process it, like take the largest component or something like that? Yeah, that's a good point. So um, 
the question is that do we do post-processing after our segmentation? Uh, no, we don't do any post-processing. Um, there is actually one fact, like uh, we compare our model against unit, and uh, if we do any uh, post-processing, like ad hoc post-processing, largest component uh, to clean out the false positives, probably the, the gap between the methods uh, wouldn't be the same. I just wanted to basically see uh, off the shelf, if we take attention gates, how much we can improve uh, on top of the uh, common models. So that mm. was the main idea. I thought about that. Um, so it's exactly this figure here, uh, where the G and the X signal are coming. They are really clearly uh, different um, spatial resolutions. So I think, although it's not in this figure, there yeah. is some resampling, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, just because I was thank, right. thanks. Thanks. Uh, yeah. Thanks for the pointer. Um, I think I was uh, quite uh, nervous, um, and I, I skipped that. Um, so <laughs> the. The gating signal is uh, basically coming from a coarser level, so it's not in the same resolution. Um, uh, and uh, X is a finer resolution uh, in the unit case. So what we can do basically is uh, in the linear transformation, uh, we can pull the features and like uh, bring them to the same resolution, coarse resolution, and then do the operation in the coarse resolution. And uh, before uh, we uh, gate uh, the input feature map, uh, we can resample them to the uh, input feature space. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, and excellent. that way we can basically uh, save from the computation time. Yeah. Yeah. And the other thing is, I think in the literature uh, it has been it has not been covered uh, well that uh, uh, most of the works are focused on using uh, vector-based uh, non-grid vector-based uh, gating signals, and um, that basically ignores all the special information. But in our method, uh, we basically use a uh, grid gating signal that improves the performance a lot. Thanks a lot. One of the interesting uh, things to look at when uh, uh, looking at results are the failure cases. I wonder if you could comment a little bit on whether you noticed any trends in the failure cases that might provide some insight into how the method could be improved in the future. Uh, that's a very good question. Uh, thank you. So how can we improve this uh, method and uh, what will be the future research? So I'll try to answer it like that. So. Um, I'm not going to talk about the uh, particular example of uh, particular segmentation because I believe that uh, this model can be used in different applications, uh, as I've shown you with the classification one. So, one difficult uh, training uh, difficulty is uh, the training behavior of the attention gates. Um, if we use a uh, softmax activation, that can spark flight things. If we use a uh, sigmoid, uh, that can saturate all the responses, and gates uh, may not train. So, I think. Uh, although soft attention allows you to train everything with uh, standard uh, SGD methods, uh, the proper convergence behavior is still, a, uh, I think, open research problem. Um, we didn't observe that uh, in all the experiments, like uh, we can train the model uh, and reach the same accuracy. So I think that's a good avenue to um, explore. There are more questions. So if I got you correctly, you only used public data sets. Um, can you elaborate on this CT150 data set? I haven't heard of it before. That's a, that's a good point. Um, so yeah, maybe I don't need to go. So TCIA data set is uh, publicly available. Uh, you can download it from the NIH data set. CT150 data set has been used uh, by a couple of papers, but I believe that uh, it's not public. So I think uh, you're right with that. And uh, but we benchmark our result against uh, 3D FCM models, and they've used the same data set. So that's how I basically compared. But that's a correct point. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. And. Uh,